I thought I might automatically record because I thought I'd put recording in the Zoom meeting, but eh, I guess it didn't. So here we are now. Um, great. So this meeting is a sync meeting around some of the North Star vision ideas that I've been working on this milestone. Um, I've outlined a pretty deep agenda. I mainly am highlighting a few of the key bullet points for each prototype. And I want to use this as an opportunity to both like share the ideas that I've had and I've been working through, but also get some feedback from you all, just as people that are A, in my working group, but also um, users of GitLab. I, in some ways, I kind of feel like I'm showing off an idea of like what our future house could look like. And if you want to live here too, which we all do, um, I'm sure you have opinions on it and I'd love to hear those, good, bad, or otherwise. So I have a few questions just as like prompts to help you think through as I'm talking through each idea, um, what maybe comes to mind. So I think something stands out to you, surprises you, or something you're curious about, maybe something seems to make sense right off the bat and you really love it, or maybe you're just like, I really can't envision a world like that. All are fair game. Um, you're welcome to throw comments into the agenda or in Figma, wherever you want. Um, I was kind of imagining I would just pull up each prototype, talk about it a little bit. I'm not just going to read off of my agenda doc here. So you can use that as like a frame of reference, but I'm not going to bore you to death. Would be my goal, at least. Sweet. So with that, let me share my desktop. OK, so the first solution that I'm covering, one of five, I've labeled this one. Can I, can I interrupt run real fast? Yeah, please. Uh, just because Jeremy, I don't think, was around when we did this, the thing where we came up with themes. I just want to touch base on those themes that we're trying to solve. Mm. So yeah. um, do you want to do that, Austin? Or Yeah, great, great point. Um, let me do that real quick. So for the sake of the stream as well, I'll go ahead and share that screen. Okay, so one of the things that we did, Jeremy, and Nick as well, since you weren't there for some of those meetings, um, was we explored some of the reoccurring themes that we're seeing either through SUS or through different verbatims and user research, kind of aggregating the things that we've seen and heard over the years. And the way that we've highlighted what stuck out to us the most are three things. We are noticing users feel overwhelmed, so we want to address that. We want to address how users orient themselves across the platform, so that that's moving from groups to projects or elsewhere into the product. And then I even think there's a meaningful way that we can help users pick up where they've left off. So that's jumping back into their pipelines they've kicked off, um, merge requests that they're doing reviews on, so on and so forth. All the many things that you start in GitLab, get distracted, and you come back to you at some point. So around those themes is what I was focused on when coming up with these different solutions. So you'll see that I've highlighted maybe a few features or concepts that might help improve or address some of those pain points. All right, I should now be sharing Figma again, hopefully. Yeah, okay. Sweet. So first solution, I call this one minimal features. The reason I call it that is this is a reoccurring choice that I'm making around a few of my designs, but we just have so many pages specifically in GitLab. I'm avoiding the word feature because I think that can sometimes be confusing. We use a lot of pages in GitLab and we put all of those pages in some form or fashion in the left sidebar. I don't know why I'm saying left sidebar. I'm talking about that contextual left-hand menu that shows up when you're in a group or project. This can get quite overwhelming for users, and I think we've been seeing that a lot. And then also it can be confusing at times when you're looking at a group or a project. They're similar, but not the same. Epics appear in one, but not in the other. You can see multiple things in one, like um, issues across uh, multiple projects, but only issues in one project in a different view. So in that way, I'm leaning towards finding a way to show less to the user at first and then give them ways to discover what they need when they need it. Um, I haven't removed everything from view, but like one way I'm considering that is timer. I got started on my watch. 
One way of considering doing that is um, by taking them out of the left-hand menu and putting them into a page. So one way that might happen is maybe labels doesn't appear in the left-hand menu. It appears in the sidebar somewhere on the project overview page. That's just one idea we could consider there. But what I'm thinking with this one is, let's not show any more than five features at a time, at least by default. Let's be opinionated on what we think users might need. For this example, I've pulled some of the most frequently visited pages in the product, as well as some of our key ultimate features. But still give them a way to access all the numerous features that we have in the product. Hopefully, this list can be a little shorter than it is today. I think it's something like 65 or 70 pages can be discovered through the left side menu of a project. Um, I think some of those could just be eliminated possibly like uh, locked files. I don't think that needs to necessarily be a page. Or at least it can be a page, but it doesn't have to be a page in our menu. Um, but with that, I'm also trying to find ways to draw attention to a specific area. So I want to use the left sidebar as its unique attribute in a project. I want to differentiate that from somewhere else. So in this design, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, it focuses on the project information where you can switch between your projects. So instead of defaulting to the avatar, we're using the icon here. And then above it is more of a global context. So you're seeing things like your pipeline stats you're running. This is similar to what you might find in Git doc, where you can see that your latest commit and how its pipeline's doing. But where the change really occurs is like when you can jump to the dashboard page and the view shifts slightly. So the coloring has changed a bit um, and the items in the left side are not in a box, but rather on the page. And there are items that are focused around you and the things that you do um, and helping you get around the platform. I've only done a few home pages in these prototypes. So consider these like it could be put onto any one of them, but I'm just exploring different ideas. I think even Annabelle has explored a few different home dashboard ideas as well. But the main focus here is to help users reorient, reorient themselves to where they need to go in the product. Um, so if you were to plan this prototype, you can jump between the project Apple and the home dashboard page. And that's pretty much all that you can go to. Um, I'm imagining in this design that the breadcrumb and the search bar your notifications to, in your profile, that stuff would not be sticky like it is today. It would scroll up with the page. So when you're in the middle of an issue, you would not see those things, but you have to scroll back up to find them. Um, yeah, and that's, Solution one. I'll take a quick pause. If there's any hot remarks anyone wants to make, and then I can jump into the second one. Oh, go figure. I'd be the first to jump in. Uh, <laughs> well, let me uh, just to back up a little bit. When you're talking about navigation, it seems like there's a lot more happening in the construct of a page other than mm -hmm. just navigation. Okay. So can you kind of fill me in a bit on what the scope is? Yeah, so I mean, mainly I would say the scope is around how we are considering a change around these, um, the scaffolding of the product. So the way you're moving around, whether it's the left sidebar, the global header. But there are weaknesses in the features that we may offer today, like the dashboard page only showing your most recent projects or your activity feed. So there might be some ways to improve, for example, reorienting users by getting them to a more meaningful place. So I'm open to the fact that this is probably not the best dashboard idea. It's just one of many that we might need to explore to actually make that more meaningful. Um, this design is more focused on trying to re-architect more of the global and left side the me playing around with the like project overview page is a loose change. Um, I'm not like super tied to it, but I just wanted to highlight a way that we could pull some things out of the left sidebar and put them into a page as opposed to having them taking up some of our left side menu. Does that help clarify it a bit, Jeremy? I think it does. Yeah, I think. Uh... And then maybe you've done this exercise, but just seeing kind of the IA from a, a very list oriented level of like where it is today. And then you talk about scaffolding where, where it will be. Uh, Cause I feel like I'm going to be reacting to visual things on here and hierarchy yeah. things, yeah. maybe not getting back to the root of the problem kind of things. So, I, so that's where like seeing 
yeah. structurally what changed to get to this because to your point, you know, every view in GitLab is so different. So I'm trying to figure out like right away, like, well, what is missing from here, like from Seymour and what, because if I'm on a, you know, an Epic or versus yeah. whatever. Uh, so, so I, that's just my, my preamble for my feedback. So if it seems geared one way or another, that's, that's why. I had a feeling you'd be hooked on a lot of the visual stuff. Um, I'll say for this round of feedback, I'm not looking so much for the um, insights you might have around like, how can we better leverage um, color or drop shadows or um, the architecture of certain elements to draw attention or to redirect to other areas. Um, I definitely want to work on refining those ideas with you more, but I would say each of these solutions is kind of different from the other one. And I want to more or less look at like, if this was the frame for our house, does it seem to work right for us? Does it help more than it does today? And I'm not completely sure one works better than the other, which is where I think we want to take some of these ideas in the testing and then figure out, do they actually help or do they potentially make it worse? So yeah, some things may be missing and it may not be obvious if you haven't been thinking about it all the time. Um, you're right. It's kind of hard to call out all the little things that I went into each of them, but I'd be happy to answer any specific if it comes up. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that, that helps that, that I don't get too in the weeds with some of the, yeah. the other things. Cool. So, uh, so let me ask this question then with, mm -hmm. and you can feel free to kick this to the end if you want. I don't want to slow up the, the process, but with each concept, mm -hmm. I'm curious, uh, how it aligns with those themes and what is kind of the leaning leading theme that's driving yeah. like direction. So here I can see like minimizing the feeling of being overwhelmed, but maybe not so much picking up where you left off or orienting yeah. to everything else. So do, does each theme kind of skew it or each concept kind of skew towards a different theme, if you will? Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I was that creative and thought about doing it that specific way, but to counter that, I will try and make sure that I highlight how it's addressing those three themes. So with this one, reducing just the number of features or pages that we're putting left sidebar, I think that helps reduce the amount of cognitive load on our user to specifically help them reorient across the platform um, using a home dashboard page that has elements that are more of a top down or global view that help you kind of span work elements you might have. So one concept I'm playing with, there are things like save views and queries, which is something that we've talked about um, before, or having drafts that you can pick up, whether that's an issue you've started and never finished, or comment you've started and never submitted, or a review you've started and never submitted. Those things are kind of just like lost in the ether right now, and hopefully you find them again. So those are elements to try and get users back into the things that they were working on. Um, and then in terms of picking up things where they left off, I mean, this could be something like the pipeline status was something that's important to me. I just keep tabs open to watch pipelines, and I think that's incredibly inefficient. Um, there should be a more live feedback way in our product to make sure you have awareness of where pipelines are at, um, if there's something you're triggering specifically. Does that help clarify it for this design? I think so, and I, I might have missed it, but the two different pages, like mm -hmm. the relationship between the purple and the gray, yep. Yeah, that was me using probably some poor visual design choices to just try and make it look different. Like I want the project view in this design to feel different than the home dashboard. I want them to have a unique feel so you don't feel like, oh, am I looking at the same thing and my sidebar is just slightly different? Or can we use some visuals to actually distinguish the pages? Okay. okay. One thing I liked about the actual um, project view here Mm -hmm. is you've reduced the that top nav bar that we have today, which seems to be a bit wasteful in space. So I like how you kind of reconfigured where some of those items live. One mm -hmm. question I do have is around, uh, like we have those notification badges for like issues and MRs at the top. And I think those are probably pretty wi widely used today. And I would assume maybe a big reason is that is for that like theme of kind of picking up where you left off or things that, you know, you've assigned to. Right. But, so I understand that, now there's like this dashboard page which provides that, but it's on some level not really, you're not able to access this information from anywhere, any page that you're at. So like that's one concern that I would have with removing that from the, the top nav. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm definitely keeping account on my badges alone just to know how many 
things I have going in case someone assigns me a new issue. Um, part of what I would love to see is just an overhaul of notifications as well so that we can better catch users when they need to know when something is alerting them, but not creating unnecessary noise for them. So yes, it is helpful to know that a new issue has been assigned to me, but do you have to be telling it to me all the time? Um, once I've gotten it assigned, I know where it is and I know how to find it. So again, this is, I think, where we'd want to lean on some user testing to help us understand, is this the right level to be putting that information at? Does it need to always stay contextual on the page? I'm trying to explore things that are counter to what we're doing today to know if they're a viable option. Is that uh, search here, is that mm -hmm. limited to the project or is it global? Yeah, didn't quite get to that level of detail with this one. Um, so I imagine it would just behave like our normal search does today. So technically for this one, it would allow you to search inside this project and then globally too, and however else it would normally work. But yes, global search is another big component of navigation, but in this design, I didn't explore that piece of it. Okay. With the term work that you used on the dashboard, I had never thought of grouping work, work items like that. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I think one thing we're going to eventually run into, and I don't want to try and necessarily des design for a problem we don't have yet, but um, I, I imagine more things will become assignable or become a responsibility for people over time. Right now, we act like only issues and merge requests are important, but I'm sure things like incidents, um, pipelines, and all those things are things people are trying to pay attention to or could be responsible for, and there are they're kind of hard to track today because you can't use those assignment responsibilities. And yeah, work items might change that paradigm a bit. Cool, going to jump to the next one. All right, so this one I'm called lovingly fewer folders. So again, all these are starting as best I can from a project view. So still keeping that same kind of conceptual model in mind where we still have projects inside groups, subgroups and groups. I don't see that necessarily changing anytime soon. Like that still seems to be the backbone of what I'm hearing from Workspace around how they're keeping their groups and projects architecture, but there's still going to be like a back end difference there, just potentially in our UI, we might still have a difference between a group and project. So in this case, I'm only showing what we're showing for projects. Um, and here I have a manage folder, a build folder, and our operations and secure. Again, so playing with that idea of showing them less at a time. So ideally, these are features that users are visiting together. So we might see that um, users often go from issues to merge requests to CI CD to boards. And because we know that heavy relationship, we want to group them together. So that's why they might show up together in the, the build folder and only showing four or five of these at a time, but still giving users the ability to find more when they need to, um, with breaking them across those categories and giving them a way to add in what they care about. So if they want to pin something specifically, Maybe I care about labels and I always want them to show up on my project app while I can pin them and they'll appear in my projects and I'll be able to have them in that list. So yeah, to go back with that theme, trying to reduce the amount of information, keeping the bucket smaller. What I've noticed is users tend to just kind of skim through what they're looking for. The more buckets they are, the longer it takes to kind of sort through the items. I'm thinking it can be like up to like 12 or so today that you have to sort through. Um, and for this one, instead of having like a home dashboard page specifically dedicated to helping you reorient, reorient, this one is more focused on using global search to help you have these like shortcut links to give you a view of different information. So the explore page, admin area, newer ideas like a recently visited list, um, or even your drafts again. I've pulled the pipeline status up into the global header to try and distinguish from the left sidebar. I'm not strongly confident in users picking up on the differentiation between the global header and the left sidebar. Um, I feel like what I've been observing is that users tend to just ignore the top bar and just focus on that left sidebar. And they're not necessarily thinking, oh, the things in the top are global, things on the left are contextual. It makes sense once you have it on paper, but it doesn't seem to be what users think at first blush. So 
this might still be a concept we can keep, but I'm also open to that no longer being a thing one day. No dashboard for this page, just a project view, um, focusing on how these folders might be categorized and organized a bit further. When you say no dashboard, do you mean you haven't created a dashboard for this prototype or there would not be a dashboard at all? I have not created a dashboard page. So I couldn't come up with also five unique dashboard ideas. So I only have <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, again, we might need to use a dashboard to help orient users once they land on the product or to give them something meaningful. But to Jeremy's point, like trying to keep things focused on this page, or rather, I guess what Nick was saying, like, how do I get to things I already had? Um, yeah. So if you were to click on build, that would then collapse the things under manage and the stuff under build would expand. Is that the idea? Yeah, more or less. I mean, I think it would behave kind of like ours does today. It probably would have to jump to the first page in the list if you clicked on it, but maybe not. Maybe it could just be a, an expand option. I feel like the micro interactions of things like that might be um, easily discovered in some initial solution validation where users like expect to do something and they can describe that to us and we can redesign those micro interactions to be a little bit better. Okay. I'll jump to the next idea. All right, so this one I've called the sidebar layers. Um, so for this one, I've also removed the global navigation. I'm kind of stuck with that theme of the breadcrumb and search, your profile remaining at the top of the page, but being probably secondary information that you're not going to use all that often, probably even possibly even tertiary. Focusing on making sure users know where they are. So that breadcrumb seems to be um, really drawing users' attention and it's helping them know where they are, but it is interesting that we don't always display the page name that you're on, possibly because that's listed on the page itself at times, but it could help reinforce exactly where it is. For this one, I've played with the idea of taking out things like to-dos, merge requests and issues and replace them with notifications, that same work concept where we join issues and merge requests and those kinds of things. So in Nick's initial question, how do I know where things are and what their status is um, from anywhere, this would be, allow you to keep that context without having to go to a dashboard page. So same type of features, you can go find your activity feed, which already exists today. But probably the biggest thing that's different here is you have pinned projects and groups. So I've pinned a few projects and groups in this example that I often use and switch between. So for me in real life, this would probably be like GitLab pajamas design system, GitLab or GitLab.com and GitLab development kit. This allows me to switch between those contexts a little bit faster and it would always be anchored to the page. So when the sidebar, the contextual sidebar is collapsed, those elements would always remain there. I can always pull out the things that are specific to my project. Now within the project view, I've still stuck with the, we're being opinionated on ideas that we want to reduce the number of features that we're proposing that are in the sidebar. So I've only picked a few here and I'm exploring an idea where instead of just giving you the badge counter for all the issues in the project, perhaps it does highlight specifically a direct link to the things that you're responsible for. So this could be issue assignments, merge request assignments or reviews or pipelines that you've triggered that are still active or running or need attention. Um, just to try and give users a way to, again, like pick up work they left off on or jump back into the things that they care about, but still have the space that they would want to view the content they care about. Um, for this one, I did explore a bit of a dashboard page. It's a little different than the first one. Um, so some things that don't necessarily appear in the global sidebar, things like bookmarks. So being able to save any page in GitLab, um, where we don't really have that feature today, we just have to rely on your web browser for that, um, helping you find things that you've been mentioned in or like the typical global dashboard views for snippets, security environments, those kinds of things. And then finding your recently visited groups and projects. Um, again, the idea here is to help users have a landing place and be able to pick up work and know where to go. The more they use GitLab, the more this would be more useful to them. Um, 
especially if they switch between devices, which I don't have any evidence for, but just something to think about. In this one, how would you, or would you see like all merge requests within a project? So um, I imagine you could still click on merge requests and it would open up all merge requests, or you could click on assign to me and it would open up merge requests with the filter already populated that says assigned to Austin. Um, that might not be clear in this uh, illustration, but that's what I was envisioning. Other thoughts? I, I, yeah, I would have picked up on the same. Like it, um, it feels like a pre-filtered nav list, but I don't get a sense that I can access the top level. Yeah, that's a good point. And again, I think all of these like smaller visual design decisions, we can totally negotiate and figure them out. Um, more or less like with this one, keeping everything in a like, vertical left sidebar, no global header, but it's now oriented on the left, getting a switcher to switch between contexts, grouping the elements for the contextual menu next to that global nav. How does that feel in comparison to like a horizontal to a vertical? Just thinking about those types of differences, that scaffolding, the framing of GitLab itself, does this help users better understand the relationship between these things? And that given that all these are desktop right you have to ask like how would you consider reconfiguring these for smaller breakpoints yeah. and or different devices to maintain the same understanding mm -hmm. of hierarchy and flow yeah i mean i think i think mobile is going to have to be different um but this one design in particular i have thought about before so i am intentionally using the sidebar icon is what we're using on mobile right now because i think this helps does connect like what this thing is with its icon itself, um, as opposed to using the menu menu hamburger icon that we've come to knowingly love. Um, I don't think we can keep a vertical menu inside of a mobile context. So we would have to rely on some sort of hamburger icon to open a drawer of items. Um, and it would probably be all the things in the global navigation. Um, so I don't think it would actually look that much different than we have today on a mobile view. But our, I don't think our numbers on small devices is very high. So it's not a key concern of mine at the moment. It's more like I'd, I would want to make sure desktop works the best and then make sure that mobile isn't broken. It should still be accessible and usable, but it shouldn't drive the desktop experience, I don't think. I did like um, how you are surfacing the pipelines within the projects. Um, I do like the pinned projects as well. This to me gives you, like makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The way it's structured. I wondered if the pipeline spinners could like even go a level higher to those pinned projects. So if you had one running like on the Apple project, you might see the spinner of the pipeline or its progress so that you didn't have to keep opening them all. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's a good point, Harrison. Um, while you were describing that, it made me remember that I also was playing with how you would be able to access the features here. So this is different than the previous two designs I was showing, where it's more of a modal view. You're scrolling through the options. Um, this drawer item would have all the different features in it. Again, I hope we can reduce this list a bit more, but you could decide what you want to toggle on and have in your project left side menu. Um, so you get some options on by default. I mean, we turn on repository and security dashboard by default. Um, but if you really care about, I don't know, releases, then you can choose to add those things in. The prototype doesn't add them in for you today, but that's just one way that we might give users the ability to show the things they care about most. Um, so it doesn't have to be buried in a layer if they care about it. Hopefully that's like the best of both worlds where we can minimize the amount of things we show users at one time, but still give them the flexibility to keep what they care about at their fingertips. I'm a bit squeamish of the thought of minimizing and then 
having users get frustrated that they have to do like two or three clicks to get to the thing they visit in every single project. Um, but maybe my fears aren't real. Similar to the uh, point that Jeremy had made earlier about the search mm -hmm. bar looking like it's part of kind of that page you're on. I could see that and like the user menu perhaps being more um, tied to that far left navigation bar, uh, just because those those both those things are all kind of like global. Um, one's a global navigation, one's a global menu. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the left sidebar is kind of already packed in this example, but right. We can always take stuff out too. Like I, I'm putting ideas in here that may never come to fruition. Like I'll I'll pick on my own idea, like drafts that may never actually happen. Like there are definitely concepts that we might take out of here, um, to prioritize more important things. And if the more important things is switching projects and groups, then yeah, so be it. Right. Cool. Thanks for hanging with me. Design four. Um, this one was off of the uh, collab session that I had with Sid from a while back. So I've only kept two of the pages just for this example um, to try and keep it similar to the other ones that I have going on. So this is a project view. What's happened here is we've reduced the sheer number of parent items. So again, going back to trying to minimize the amount of things that we're telling users about. Um, but as a result, it's also made these sub menus a little bit longer. Um, so we'd be trading off more parent items for more sub menu items, which you can kind of see how that feels by just kind of scrolling through them. Um, and I call this one the breadcrumbs as navigation because it's pulling the breadcrumbs out of the main page and putting it into the global header. And so this would show the projects, the groups that you're part of um, are working in rather, and then the home dashboard page. Uh, one of the ideas that we wanted to explore with this one is if you use the breadcrumb to navigate between groups and projects. So here I'm seeing recent projects that are within the group of tree and I have other subgroups and stuff below that, but these are maybe ones that I visited recently. So I could have a way to switch between those. Um, same with tree, I could use that to find the different groups there. And then the uh, home dashboard page still keeps the left sidebar, but the left sidebar changes depending on which location of the product you're in. So in this area, you now have things like recently visited, but all the normal features that we have in the product today that are in the global header have been pulled into the section. So your to-do list, your issues, merge requests, um, instead of putting things in the menu menu, groups, projects, security, operations, snippets, environments, all those dashboard pages also appear here. So your dashboard page is a collection of those global view items. And then um, your project view has less categories, but not so few as the first design, more of like a, a middle ground where there's like seven or eight parent categories with still all the features underneath them. How would I quickly switch projects here? Or so I think- group. Yeah, so I think if you were to want to try and quickly, quickly, right? Um, if I conveniently just wanted to switch to the group banana and I had just been in it, I could click on the breadcrumb and go to banana and that would open up the banana project. If I was looking for, I don't know, the blueberry project, I'd probably, my first thing would be to search for it. Um, but I think in theory, you could go to the home page, go explore your projects and search and filter by name, just kind of like you do now on the home project page. Um, but yeah, it would all kind of be dependent on where you are. Like using the breadcrumb may or may not be the right thing. You would have to have some knowledge about it. So like the way I was kind of doing this example was I was putting all the fruits that could live on a tree in my tree group. Um, so if you can think of a fruit that doesn't live in a tree, uh, it would not appear in this list. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah, my, my initial reaction is that it's like kind of combining two navigation concepts into one that is less intuitive, I suppose, from, from my perspective. Sure. Yeah, I think that's fair feedback. Um, I do know that I think 
there are a lot of users that see our breadcrumbs and think about their groups and subgroups and projects as a directory. So I feel that for some of them, it only is natural to want to explore it in such fashion. But yeah, maybe there are some ways that we can just better help them explore that without having to lean on the breadcrumb as a navigational element. to do's and the assigned issues that are hidden in a lot of these is that an intentional choice to get rid of to be notifications um i wouldn't say it was an intentional choice to just get mm -hmm. rid of to do's but it was more that i think there's an opportunity to improve how we present to do's today one of the things I found interesting just in some of the user sessions that I've watched is a lot of people would either ignore them and don't know what they are, or why they appear, how they came to be. Um, but I think if you break down to do's a little bit further, you'll see that some of them are alerts, some of them are mentions. There are some more common terms I think we could use to better differentiate what appears there to perhaps make them more useful to users. Um, so I, it's a much different thing to have Jeremy mention me on something versus having a pipeline fail. Mm -hmm. How can we better orient users around that information would be something to consider. Agreed. I feel a little um, anxiousness with these ones because I'm always just like, where are my to do's? That's like the most yeah. important yeah. thing for me. Um, but yeah, I, I understand too, we're doing the hierarchy and like the whole model. Right. Yeah, and for like this one, I mean, this, this is no different than our current existing one where it's just like a to-do list. I was trying to explore some of the ideas of trying to reduce that feeling of being overwhelmed by just using a dot indicator rather than like a full-on badge counter at times. So perhaps when you have a new issue you've been assigned that you haven't seen yet, then you get a blue dot and it tells you, hey, you got something here to go check out. But once you viewed it, that dot might go away. Um, so that it goes out of your mind and you can go back to it when you need to. Um, but that way you're not keeping count of how many numbers or what the number is in your badge. Cause that's what I'm doing today. There's I think nine assigned to me and I have to mentally pay attention to it. Did that increase to 10? Did it go down? I don't know. All right, last one. I saved this one for last for a specific reason. To me, this feels like the multi-million dollar idea that I don't know if we can afford. Um, one of the complexities with navigation in general is what I see as load bearing walls all over the product. You can simply run into performance issues by just putting in a bad query. So it makes me nervous to think about what if we had a left sidebar that was always the same and it never changed. We only showed you specific features and each feature would allow you to jump into a view of, let's say, issues across all projects that you work in or that are in GitLab, period, um, all depending on how you choose to filter those items. I know Nick maybe has some experience with that as he's had to kind of navigate that challenge um, with the global search as they try and index all this information. But I think this aligns with reducing um, the feeling of being overwhelmed because there's less places to go it's more about what are you looking for? So instead of having to find your specific project or find your specific group, you just go to the feature you care about and search for the thing that you are looking for, which requires a little bit of forethought coming into it. You gotta know exactly what you're looking for. Otherwise you're just gonna get, I don't know. Well, how many issues would we have in GitLab War right now? Like 75,000 or something, um, 75,000 issues and you're just not gonna know where to start. Uh, so in this example, I've, I have a left sidebar. It would never change. It's always going to be the same. I've chosen a specific handful of features again that are most popular pages to visit right now in the product as a starting point. And just to help illustrate that this is agnostic of a group or project view, I have epics and issues in the same list. So this would be similar to being at a root group where you can see epics and issues in the same place, except it spans everything. I don't know if that's even possible. I don't know if we can afford to even do that but I wanted to at least have the idea on the table. And the only other page that I did besides this one, because I didn't explore a home dashboard page in this one, was just having a browse page that is more full for both groups and projects. They're not just a group page with subdirectories of subgroups. 
and just a project list, like it would just be one. So you could have both your space, so the things that belong to you. I have my own personal namespace group, and I have a project that's kind of floating in my own namespace. And then the things that I'm a member of, which I mean, I know today in GitLab for me, that would be a thousand plus things probably would be in this list. Um, but for organizations that have a lot less, this might not be as overwhelming. Um, but for this one specifically, I think this is where save views would be really important because as I'm further utilizing GitLab, creating custom views of things, I would want to be able to shortcut back to them so I don't have to recreate the same thing over and over and over again. But it would help reduce some of the confusion around like, where am I in the platform? You've specified where you want to look. You might be able to click on an issue and open up um, either as like a modal on the page or as like a new page itself. But we'd always reorient you back to the root, or rather, I don't like to say root because it's not necessarily the root, like a top view of everything across GitLab. What happens if you clear all these filters? I don't know. We probably would give you 500 error because it can tell you you need to filter by at least one thing, otherwise, you'll break our database. Um, but yeah, just a same similar concept of trying to reduce the sheer volume of things that we're showing, giving users the ability to kind of pin what they care about and save where they want to go, but still giving that like global context view. I feel a little bit leery of this just because like we do somewhat give users this top down perspective with things like the milestone page as a dashboard view. But I don't necessarily see users using that a lot. So I just wonder, would that actually be useful? I'm not sure. I love this. I would be the hungry PM. Um, however, I, I don't know how this would track with some of with software engineers or other users at all. Um, the other thing is we typically render these lists as lists, but like when you get to an issue list like this, you might want to view it as a board or a band or roadmap or other ways besides just our current lists right. to view that data set you got to in the first place. And right now we make people go everywhere to find those. So I think having these views in one spot where you could rotate between different views on the same set makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, to, that's specifically sense like, all, yeah, like the whole Jose, I was trying to show both a list view and a board view. So you don't have you can keep the same query and toggle between those things. Um, so that you don't have to keep flipping between pages. Um, that probably could be done regardless of how we do the navigation itself, but it, it would be just like one way we could try and help reduce the number of items. Another question I had is, could you have some default pinned views like my issues <clears throat> that are already your pre and then they could get rid of them or keep them, but there might be a way to grab them? Yeah, I haven't really um, explored that at all that much, but I think that makes sense. Like, give users a few out of the box views that we think might be useful for them. I think a great way to start would be the things that we already create. Um, those notifications around those badges today that tell you what issues are assigned to you, merge requests, reviews, that kind of stuff. But even maybe some new ones that we don't even do today because you kind of can't. Like, what if you could see all the packages or something across all of your different projects at the same time? I mean, I guess you kind of can a little bit, but. You can't go across groups, but like, what if you could? What if you could see across every single group all the packages that you are a part of? That's not a view that most people get today, unless they're unless they have the forethought to create a root group and never let there be another root group to compete with it. If they have only one, then they get that benefit. This also supports additive product projects, which we don't have currently. We can't say, "I just want to see." issues from getlab.com and .org in one view. There's no way to cherry pick. So the, the filter system could potentially allow additives and yeah. that. 
Yeah. It could be very powerful. <laughs> right, which is, I guess, most really my like closing point on this one is again, like this is the one that I'm a little bit scared of just because I it feels like too much of a technical burden to propose. Um, but perhaps that's where user research could tell us if it's worth it or not. Like if we see that it substantially better aligns with expectations and that we really feel confident it would improve our SAS score, maybe it is worth the investment to try and tackle these technical hurdles that we need to conquer to make it possible to look across these things. But Can I give a shot at comparing what each one is, <laughs> each sure. of the five? Um, so just so how over your based off your overview, the first one is reducing scope in the left bar, but allowing users to add as many as they want, while also differentiating between a group or a project from your overall dashboard. Yep. The second one is very similar but maybe there's not as much differentiation between when you're in a group or a project and a dashboard because you always have that header at the top. Mm -hmm. And the sidebar is group is more opinionated in the sense that it's grouped into specific sections and then you can add things to those sections. Right. The third one, this one is a, I would say it's more drastic change where it has a way to easily switch groups and projects on the left. There's some main navigation items on the left as well. And I'm not sure exactly what these are yet. I haven't dived into it, but then the sidebar within a group or project, the items in the sidebar are more related to me personally. Yep. Um, the fourth one is adding the breadcrumbs to the header. So you're navigating directly in the header. Mm -hmm. And then it's the left sidebar is mainly the same as today. It's just a regrouping of the content in yep. different categories. Exactly. And then the last one is more thinking about GitLab as a search engine, I would say. I guess I'll just search. Yeah. Or really, it's that like top view. It's, it's kind of the views that we give you a few of today, but not as much flexibility as this is presenting. Does anyone have? thoughts on kind of where we're at right now and next steps? I, I do have a question because just back to kind of the initial thought on the visual side of things. Yeah. Um, I feel like that could maybe influence the testing more than you might want it to. So is there a way to, to, to go into text, wireframe, things like that, where it, it simplifies the testing so that it's purely based on the concept and the mental model and not anything to do with aesthetics or hierarchy or, or concept. Yeah, I, I think we could abstract these into just wireframes if we think that would be better for the user testing um, validation. Um, I would be curious to know if users would be able to recognize the complexities that they're introduced with the product today. So I don't know if it'd be easy to discern, like, do they know if they're in a group or project, um, depending on what we're showing them with just like a wireframe. But I mean, perhaps we're asking the wrong question. Yeah, because I, I think to be honest, um, as you flip through these, granted it's a first time, like. If you showed it to me right away, I wouldn't necessarily be like, oh, that's a project or that's a group. Right. Uh, I would I would still have to walk through kind of my decision tree first to even get there. So I don't know that it to me it, it wasn't apparent 
just by looking at these that I'm looking at a project versus a group or or whatnot. So, yeah. um, and I and part of my question too is just there's so much um, visual refinement that I'd want to explore that that I wouldn't want to potentially put out some of these for testing if there were going to be drastic changes in the way that we might handle iconography or type or color, et cetera, sure. that would influence some of those decisions. Uh, yeah, those are all great points. Um, at least for this milestone, I didn't want to limit myself on a specific like visual choice or aesthetic. So I left open that I could explore a couple ideas and know that probably most of them will be tossed. My comment was, know, oh, I was just going to ask, how would we know between left now, like there's different ways that you treated left now, some of those could even work with some of the other, potentially you could mix and match, like sectioning that left now or things like that. But how would we know from the feedback which part works or if it's the whole or There's just a lot of changes in each one. So I'm just wondering how, how we plan to evaluate them against each other. It's a great question. <laughs> um, I'll let Ashley provide some more color to it. But one of the things that we had chatted with Adam about from UX research was like, hey, we, we have some like rather complex ideas that we want to test and we want to know what the best way is to validate these concepts. So I would say we haven't drilled down specifically what that's going to look like yet, but Ashley and I have been collaborating on a list of, um, I guess eventually it boils down to some scenarios. We've run some users through to get their thoughts and feedback on. What would you say, Ashley? Yeah, that's kind of along the lines of the feedback I had was like, um, so because we want to compare them against each other, whichever ones we end up using for testing, which I recommend no more than three because just timing in a session and just overwhelming participants, asking them to think about like five concepts would be a lot to ask. Um, but making sure that we land them kind of in the same place when we start each uh, showing each one and also um, like if the, yeah, like kind of what Jeremy was saying, if a lot of the content is going to be shown on one, we shouldn't show it on the other, just so they are more comparable. Um, so those are just some of my initial thoughts. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how I would do that. Let's just say if I was taking solution five and like solution three, just because they are conceptually so different, like one kind of assumes we keep our architecture as it is today and you have to navigate to a group or project to have your specific view. So like this one where you're, you're still staying within a project view. Um, it's hard to show, I can't like show this page as easily in solution five where you probably have to go drill down and find a readme in a repository to see that same thing but they're, they're kind of different. Um, so I, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what the best task would be to give them or what to present them, which is what I was looking for us to kind of decide on. I was like, this is what we want to test so I can try and recreate them in the prototypes. We never really got to pinpointing that, this milestone. So for Kristen's first question about if we're mixing or if we're testing all these and like maybe one area performs better than another, or maybe we want to mix and match, match certain things. My thought from this is that it all goes back to those core themes that we created at the beginning and the measures that we're creating for the research should tie back to those themes. So we can see from which prototypes did each theme perform better. So for instance, maybe this one performs better at picking up where you left off, whereas the second one, and I'm pulling this out of nowhere, but the second one performs better at orienting the users across the product. And all of the tasks and all of the research questions that we're asking in the study should all tie back to those so that we have clear measures of which one's performing better. And then from there, we can see 
All right, if this one's performing better here and this one's performing better there, are there ways that they can come together so that we can get the best of both worlds and we're increasing those scores across the board? So that's what I'd be hoping to see come out of the research is how are we measuring uh, to these themes? In terms of the tasks and like, for example, this one here, it doesn't sound like there would be a project overview page. So that kind of puts us in an interesting position, right? Where like, if the research is saying we land everyone on the project overview page, what does that mean for this, right. this prototype here? Yeah, like maybe, maybe I could be on this view. I could click on a project and it gives me a a little information blurb about said project, but perhaps the concept of the overview page has now changed. What does that mean for discovery of projects, understanding them? Yeah, it might look different. And that kind of goes back to my one of my original thoughts that now we're starting to get away from navigation a bit into choosing what content we're actually feeding them. Uh, and, and so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a hard line to walk. I agree. And that, that's, I think, where it gets really challenging is there are good elements about our navigation, for sure. Um, but I think some of the shortcomings are tied to performance barriers, are tied to um, missing features, or just general miss understanding of GitLab itself. And so it, it feels like it bleeds into other areas of the product, like notifications or a dashboard page or the overview, because we have to lean on other things to make up for the deficits right now. I'm most curious to know, is there anything that you guys like, definitely, this is out. Just go ahead and cut this from the list. Just save me a prototype. Just tell me this one. Hmm. I love that you explored it, but move on. Do something different. I'm not a big fan of the breadcrumbs one, just because I feel like it's not very intuitive, like Jeremy had said. Okay, the one on the breadcrumbs on the top. Yeah. Can't cut that one because that sits. So we have to test it. <laughs> we have to test that one. <laughs> I would cut that and I would cut five. Oh, interesting. Uh, and the reason I would cut five is because it, it feels very corporate and, it, and and I'm not talking aesthetics. I'm talking the list of items feels very, here's the features we want you to focus on, but it doesn't feel personal to my use at all. And so I feel like there's a, a very big, and I know views is in there, but it's very small in mm -hmm. relation to the rest of the content. And so I, I feel like... Um, I feel like it's a jump between like a really high level of abstraction to like a very detailed level in, on the right. And there's no middle ground for me to kind of find my way. It's like an all or nothing kind of deal. Uh, and then three that are, are four of the breadcrumbs because I, I just think that that to me is um, when I think about the accessibility implications and the UX implications of mixing patterns like that, I've never seen an outcome be positive in that way when we try to, mm -hmm. to rethink things that have been done traditionally. And, and even, you know, the thought of, hey, we're probably going to have breadcrumbs somewhere in the page content elsewhere. And if all of a sudden we've got breadcrumbs up here and breadcrumbs here and they behave and do very different things, that to me is just a kind of a UX, uh, a big UX problem. So yeah. I would definitely consider cutting with those, but that's fine. Thanks for the feedback. I'm, I really like your um, thinking through on solution five. Um, I had not considered that aspect of it, but it makes sense. I do feel like it a little bit over rotates to assuming you got a lot of things you care about, but there there's definitely some segment of GitLab that doesn't have thousands of projects that they work in. They work in like two very happily and it's less of a challenge for them. And this might make that experience worse for those people. 
Yeah, it's a, and we can do this like on another in another instance or, or async or something. But I did always back have a concept that was similar to this that maybe uh, we can we can hash that out or whatever. But it, it it has more of a grouping between a global high level, but then more of that tailored to project or or individual view. Uh, but in that same kind of a concept of a rigid left uh, sidebar. So we can maybe explore that when we have time. Yeah, I mean, I know we are technically one minute over, so no worries if you want to hop off. But yeah, Jerry, if you want to talk about it, I mean, I'm more than happy to drag your design over and talk about it. Oh, hey, look at that. How did you know? I just want to validate too that if I was going to drop one, I would drop five too. Um, it's my favorite though, I'm saying from the same queries and views concept, I think we could validate that maybe outside of navigation with the user map or other places within. Mm. Um, it's hard for me to see kind of like that use case of like, how would I get to the repo about me page and just also have questions, but I, it's still my like favorite concept, just maybe for a different user testing. Yeah, I will say we're trying to solve a lot of the problems that you kind of mentioned, like searching across multiple groups or multiple projects right. within global search. And so some of these, you know, we'll be able to maybe um, be able to justify once we see how users interact with that, as well as like we're wanting to do a concept of like saved searches like Kristen had mentioned. So right. um, that could be like our first testing prep or something like this. Um, the one that I was hesitant about was actually the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and it may just be further refining the idea, but um, at my first reaction was like, huh, the header disappeared on projects and groups. And going back and forth, I see that actually a lot of the content, like the whole right side of the header is the same. All of it's the same, except for there's a breadcrumb and the pipeline running, but, but the other part is purple. So that was just confusing to me. So I don't know if there needs to be further refinement of how you how to differentiate the dashboard from groups and projects. But the header part, I was like, I feel like I don't get it. That's great feedback. Yeah, I think that's where I was going with that continuity and not knowing what was what. And that's where some of the visual design could maybe really hurt testing if this concept is viable from a, you know, you're taking somebody from this higher level to a deeper one. If the visual design followed that path and, and helped the user understand where they were at in that flow, that would help. But as is, it, it it's doing the opposite where it's making you feel more lost rather than Hey, that's like, okay. And yeah. so that's, yeah, that's just where the visual design would, could maybe uh, provide like, you know, uh, all alternate feedback or reaction to the concept when really the root of the idea is really there. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. All these things are good. I envision in 15.3 and we'll have a discussion more milestone planning tomorrow needing more time to refine specific pieces of these designs, cutting some ideas, maybe even going deeper in some areas. And like Jeremy saying, perhaps even like um, helping make it more lo-fi and standardizing loosely how they visually look so we don't over-rotate towards one just because it has a stronger visual design touch than another. And kind of looking at Ashley's point, we there are, you know, we have to keep the breadcrumb one. It's just we have to. So that's one of the ones that will test. And then there's kind of the one where everything's on the left side. That's another one. And then the first two, they're different, but they feel similar. Similar ideas yeah. in terms of grouping. So maybe those are the three categories that then in fifteen three we start yeah. kind of uh, refining further. Yeah, for sure. Just curious, was the breadcrumb one tied to being able to kind of change projects and groups in that method, or could we explore a concept that had the breadcrumbs more front and center, but maybe not 
as that sort of switcher like we experienced in this prototype because that's where I had the most problem. Um, this one specifically was Sid's idea around focusing on using just the breadcrumbs as the navigational elements. Um, I think he also views GitLab in a hierarchy structure of a folders and folders and files and folders type of view. So to him, it made sense to use the breadcrumb as a navigation tool. Now, it may not be the best placement for it, but um, at least how it stands was how he thought it should work. So we'll at least keep that. But if there's another idea like you're saying about maybe making a breadcrumb more front and center, I think that would be okay. I still think the limitation to the breadcrumb is like, you better know where the thing is, because otherwise you're just gonna be stuck in scrolly menus looking for something that may not even be where you're looking. But I guess that maybe is the struggle with files in general. You gotta know where some things are. And if you do know where they are, then it can be a fast way to move around. But if you don't, then yeah, um, clicking through can be quite annoying. Yeah, and, and I know that at the Apple level, like it makes sense to change things, but if you're changing things at the tree level, mm -hmm. like then it makes somewhat less sense because your context is still gonna shift, right? You're not gonna have an Apple project under the house. And right. so uh, for me, I think that, conceptually now understanding kind of the how you've explained it i think that you you could do something with this concept a if it wasn't called breadcrumbs and b if it didn't look like breadcrumbs uh where it was it's more of a tiered approach it's something some other metaphor but not breadcrumbs because immediately that infers a specific interaction and it infers a specific aesthetic and both of which are what I find problematic about the, the concept. So yeah. uh, if you had a way that, you know, explore something on that, that you could still understand that you're nesting, you're getting deeper, uh, then it could work. It's kind of akin to, to concept uh, three, mm -hmm. which, um, which has this sense of depth you've got a global level you've got a specific level mm -hmm. that that to me has that nesting approach and so if there's a a uh, uh, some kind of a, a method to have that similar type of a depth feel at that higher level i think that it would work better and, and if the name was different and you know so you get rid of some of those other concepts as far as calling it breadcrumbs and looking like breadcrumbs mm -hmm. um and, and in that way, it feels more navigational and more structural and more switcher and intentional. Yeah. Um, um, so I will say that this, this type of direction is probably my favorite. Uh, and I know it's very, you know, it's very Slack-like and, and there's other tools like that too, but it's, it's kind of used to even, even some of the design tools that I'm used to from the right sidebar where like the old Photoshop illustrator days where you have your groups of, of, uh, of views and widgets, and you're able to quickly jump in and see those. Um, so this kind of aligns with some of my mental model too, but. Well, I don't feel like it's by any means copying. I think it's mostly just understanding that we face a similar problem that a lot of other applications that give you multiple places to go in their application have. Like you got to switch between servers and Discord. You got to switch between servers and Slack. You got to switch between things and different other platforms you have. And they've all kind of found, oh, it helps users to find what they're looking for. The one challenge that we have that's different than others is relies on our access control model. So whereas like I get every Slack workspace that I've been added to at my fingertips, I have to live with the fact that I'm in a thousand plus projects in GitLab already. So I can't just put every single project in the left sidebar by default. That would be pointless. It probably would give me 15 useless projects at the top or not useless, just ones that I'm not using. So we have to work, find a, a unique way to help users put what they would care about there. So in this, yeah, like in this one, you can maybe pin your project yeah. or Maybe your stars, but I think of stars conceptually different. Nick and I had a little chat about that last week. Like to me, stars are things that you like socially support, maybe or interested in, but maybe not like the thing you're working on. It all kind of depends on what you use GitLab for. Yep, agreed. And and me alluding to other tools is is more of a 
compliment than a not than a, oh you're keeping it's it's a more of a positive because uh we don't we don't need to reinvent the wheel right that that's if there's a paradigm that works and has the same similar constructs then there's no need to reinvent that uh so uh yeah yeah cool. um i had one question um so there's been other like redesigns other people have done so marcel did one yep which i think is closest related to number two yep and then jeremy was just talking about one jeremy or austin i know you've looked at it is that idea largely different than one of the proposals here and is that something we should explore or is it kind of along the same lines but maybe visually different for right Marcel's now Marcel's idea you're talking about uh, i'm talking about jeremy's Jeremy's idea. Oh, Jeremy's idea is up on the page now. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll say this was done uh, a long time ago. Um, and uh, so I, I would have to kind of go back and re rework some of my thinking here or think through it to explain it better. Uh, to me, that's why I brought this one up as it feels closest to five, but maybe with some more... Uh, clear grouping of very high level GitLab concepts and then more specific uh, project related things or group related navigation in their own sections, but all contained and clearly kind of identified. So uh, I think it's closest to five, both in structure and concept, mm -hmm. but it's as a, a different way of breaking things apart. Mm -hmm. Isn't five the same crazy setup? Yeah, I think he's saying like um just visually. Gosh, I hate the zoom toolbar. It's always in front of my tabs. Um yeah, he's just saying visually, like it's a left sidebar with like these being maybe more okay, just imagine just global features versus like our DevOps features. Um except that I think the difference here is Jeremy's living within the constraints of you still need to be looking at a specific project and those features tied to that specific project. Whereas these things are more of your top-down view, your global scope of everything. Correct. Um, and for what it's worth, I think I'm, can you see the other design now? I think it's showing. Yeah. This was Marcel's idea, which Tori, right? It, it's pretty similar to number two. I just removed a few things um, and played with the visual aesthetic a little bit. And got rid of menu, menu. <laughs> yeah, got rid of menu, menu, which this one's a um, grid dot menu, but <laughs> not quite the same. So yeah, those are those are all the ideas. I've had a lot of fun, this milestone, um, working through each of them. I wish I could confidently say like, this is the one we're going to definitely go test. Um, but I think what we know for sure is there needs to be a little more refinement of them. Um, yeah, I hope I can get to a place where we're like, cool, we're excited about these concepts going into testing. Next milestone would be my goal. Um, I don't think we feel that way necessarily today, but I hope that it at least instills some confidence that we are moving in that direction. Yeah, absolutely. So for planning, we'll do more refinement in 15.3 and then the testing that happened in 15.4, or can you, are we going to combine refinement and testing? My like just overly ambitious self wants to say like, no, yeah, we could like come with designs and like test them in 15.3. Realistically, should we just say 15.4 and like, if it's earlier then great, if not, we didn't disappoint anyone? To you all to design. Yeah. I we guess our milestone planning tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But what are you thinking, Ashley? Oh yeah, sorry. I, I won't be able to attend that, but I will definitely read through the notes. Maybe it'd be good to sync um because I won't be there for that uh meeting or the weekly. But mm -hmm. um just thinking about some of the things that were mentioned in terms of maybe deciding on which ones ultimately will be tested and maybe moving towards more just like the lower fidelity wireframes and stripping it down a little bit. If that is something we decide, we can do a different approach. So I guess once we decide 
if that's decided, then I would suggest probably something a little different than what we have in the plan, because some of the measures that you're asking about, Tori, for those themes were things like task success and things that would require more of the interaction. So if we do want to just kind of get like um, impressions of the different views and ask some questions around it and still get a lot of that qualitative feedback and maybe have some rating questions and things like that, it, we can do that. It would just be different. So it would probably be simpler because Austin wouldn't be building them out as much to get things like task success and difficulty and all of that stuff, but it would be kind of like a step before that. So just something to consider, but it would differ how I would suggest um, the plan itself. That makes sense. And that, since that would be more lightweight, I'm thinking, then potentially we could do refinement in 15.3 and this lightweight research to kind of help facilitate a direction. And then in 15.4 would be the larger study with a more built out prototype that we test. We wouldn't be doing that with five, obviously. It would be, um, we would move forward with whatever we learned in 15.3. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. What do you think, Austin? Yeah, so I think what I'm hearing is um, break them down into their hierarchical elements. So focus last time was on the body of the page, but more around like, how do you move between things just using whether it's the top or left sidebar, depending on the design, um, and then start from there and find a way to test it, um, which I, I'd be fine putting those things together. Um, it'd probably be useful to check in with Jeremy and see if he's got some ways to help make them feel the same, even though they are structurally different in some ways. And then, um, Ashley, if you could just give me an idea of just like, maybe just like one or two things that we would want to make them do. I think that would give me enough to make the like three or four interactions we want on each one. Yeah, I was thinking, this is just off the top of my head right now, but something like, almost like how you structure the first click test, mm -hmm. but have them do it with video, even if we, maybe didn't moderate and have them talk through a lot of what they're thinking as they're doing it. Um, and you could still see if people can decipher like groups versus projects and things like that with just even having it in more of like a concept test format. Um, so yeah, you, you wouldn't necessarily need to be, build out a bunch of interactions. It would be more static if that's what we're talking, because I thought that's what you guys were talking about, but yeah, we could still evaluate like the, basically the similar tasks that we were going to do and it would just be more of like do they know what they're looking at as opposed to can they like do all the clicking to get through it you're saying like just have a single page and then yeah all the data stripped away rectangles and blocks everywhere and saying like where do you think you are right now what do you and just you rely on those visual cues for that or well, I guess it depends how stripped I would say it has to have enough to like orient them. So I don't want to say, I don't know, it would have to be enough to, for them to know where they're at, but, um, I guess, depending on how stripped it is and, and all of that, it would depend if we need to moderate them or not. But what I mean is that, um, it almost could be structured similarly to like a first click test, but with focus on like the qualitative insight and not needing a ton of users, um, rather than trying to see if they can complete the test. So like, so just to use as an example, yeah. there's some things that have terms like plants, banana. Do I need that level of detail you think? Or can I just use skeleton placeholders to represent like, this is a pipeline name, but I'm not explicitly showing that. Like, if you're ignoring the fact that I put a few dummy data pieces in there, but everything was a placeholder like that, maybe some iconography to associate with it. Are you saying it needs to be more like you need some content, but some placeholders are okay? I feel like that's okay um, if they're all similar to that. Um, and as long as like whatever we're asking them to decipher, like there's enough to make up, you know, for them to get to some um, understanding based on how much we show. So like if we're asking them, like, how would you, you know, switch from a group to a project, we obviously have to show enough to where that would be decipherable, but also enough that it's not like the only thing on the page because then that's kind of unfair. So I feel like it just needs to be balanced. It doesn't have to be like a complete 
page, I don't think. But yeah, so like enough. if you go if you go back to the project overview, for example, like we would want all the stuff in the left nav, right? But maybe you don't need the whole README there, for example, because it's kind of just it's not part of what we're going to be testing. Uh, we would want the, the breadcrumbs, we would want the search, we would want the, that tanuki in the right. All of that I think would need would probably need to be there. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, you could strip away a lot of the visual design and make it wireframes where you still have the same structure and content, but then we take away the visual design aspect so that that's not right. leading people in a direction. That's also an option as well. I tell you what, I'll, I'll strip this one tomorrow and actually I'll find time to sync with you um, when you're available. Okay. And then we'll, uh, we can chat about that and then just see if I'm on, I'm on the right track. And if not, then we'll reorient. And uh, Jeremy, we can always chat about your idea because I know a lot of <laughs> people, a lot of designers loved it. And I think there are cues of it that I've taken from as well. Um, but since you had already kind of done it, I wanted to have other options on the table too. So don't consider yours completely out of the mix. Yeah, too. And and uh, to the point about aesthetics too, uh, there I think you could test different wireframe layouts right where if you just did these into boxes you could you could put the tiered sidebar with maybe different color gradation you could put a header and a sidebar with different sections and leave no content and simply even ask users where would you expect to, to change a project where right. would you expect to have a search for for x where would you expect to have your personal settings mm -hmm. and and even get a sense of where is the user even looking for these things without any type of text cues, you know, but just page placement, where they, where would they even expect to find these so that we're uh, aligning with that, you know, like having the user on top right is pretty common and having search top left is pretty common. So things like that, we could start to tease out those patterns too, so that when it comes to the aesthetics, we can, we can aptly weight those and position those that would also help align with the mental model of of the structure yeah that makes sense i know that adds complexity to the testing but it, it you know even a few questions like that would help uh, i think get a sense of you know what might work because maybe this concept works really good but people don't expect it in a linear fashion you know that, that kind of thing so So are we allowed to share this video? Yeah, for sure. I'll um have her son upload to the cloud. I'll download it and put it on unfiltered. Sounds good. Awesome. Yeah, Austin. thanks so much, Austin, for mm -hmm. sharing and mm -hmm. maybe some regular syncs or however you want to do it. If it's more beneficial to meet one on one with individual people, that's great too. Um, but yeah, yeah, really great feedback from everyone. So. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. I've gotten some good feedback along the way. I've met with a few other designers, showed them, refined the, those ideas, and I've got some more ideas refined further. We'll just have to get it a little bit farther before testing. Cool. We'll get there. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.